On the top, right down, down there. the water flows in that top manifold. That's an insulated manifold. And the water just flows out of the basement, across that manifold, and back down. And that's really the, all, all it is. Really simple system. Is it working right now? It's working right now. I don't check it. I mean, I check it maybe every once every three or four months now. And this, this is four years now it's been in. And it basically offsets the heating of that building by 50%. $1,000 a year. Take it. It's not like my, my, my solar electric. I have wind trouble all the time. It acts as a big sail. But these tubes just don't. Okay. They're just round don't, and the yeah. wind just flows through them. I mean, all my buildings were built in the 70s, early 80s. They're not ideal energy. I got this up to four star. All the other buildings I got up to five star. But I intend to take them to net zero energy. And I intend to do that in the next two years. By doing that, I can meet all my energy needs. Wow. So the, the pipes go straight up. Once one goes up with the fluid, and one comes back down. And it's got a pressure tank. You need a pressure tank, expansion tank. This little pump right here is the pump. It's got a, uh, a pressure relief valve here. It's 75. PSI and it's temperature pressure relief valve. Lowe's has them, but they sell them for wells. They sell a well pressure relief valve, and they're, they're only $13. Hmm. So this is an old tank. I, it, it, it's actually been in the buildings for 30 years. I just swapped it. I swapped it out and put new tanks, bigger tanks, and all the other buildings. And I use this, and I, it's a preheater tank, and it's got a coil inside, and that's my heat exchanger. And the controller. Right now, the uh, it's 64.9, and the tank is 73. So we're still holding heat from yesterday. But this is a preheater, so th then it flows into this, the regular hot water tank. It just flows out out of this into that. But until I put this system in here, I could not hold this. This this room would go down to almost ground temperature or about. 38 to 40 degrees, and it's staying right now 60 degrees because of, because of this system. Even in the winter? Even in the winter. This propylene glycol, it's good to 100 below. That's what's in the system now. It's 50-50. And basically, I pressurize it with a little garden. Wow. You just hook that yeah. up, and I can just pump this up and pressurize, put this thing in my system. So I'm going to drain propylene, because I don't like the idea of propylene, no. it's, and, and it's I use vodka or gin, or at least try it there. Did you install the system yourself? Yes, I did. I actually I, I hired to help people to help me, but I installed, I was just out of the hospital when we installed this. I was, I was uh, being treated for cancer, and I had been out of the hospital. I was in the hospital for six months, I got out, I, I was dreaming about doing something, <laughs> and I sort of supervised this, but I actually didn't do the work. I, you know, I said, drill a hole here. Oh. Well, back here. well, how much do one of those tubes weigh? They must weigh almost 100 pounds. Oh, no, the tubes are very light. They're, when they're, they're empty? Uh, the they're tubes are always empty. empty. There's, no, there's no fluid in the tube other than a heat exchange. Right. Yeah. And so the tubes weigh almost nothing. They're two meter, the the full-size tubes are uh, two meters long. There's 16 tubes in a ray. And the tubes are, uh, those particular tubes, that set was built by Dow Engineering. They sold it to Mercedes. Mercedes, if you go to Stuttgart, Germany, the, these tubes are everywhere. Mercedes has them everywhere. They're powering everything they do, Mercedes, with these tubes. Well, Greece, too, they, every house has some kind of a solar panel type yeah. thing. I mean, all of Europe is doing that. Well, as a matter of fact, in Spain, the, they, it's a regulation now, a law that you cannot build anything uh, without using solar thermal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I discovered some tubes that have been operating for more than 30 years without any problems. But I ordered extra tubes when I bought, I, I ordered 80 some tubes, and I'm putting another uh, two sets on my house, and I sold a set, and I expected breakage. So I ordered extra tubes, and I haven't had any tubes. We've dropped the tubes. They seem to be very tough. I, I'm a geologist, and I get a thing called, uh, it was used to be called GeoTimes, but now it's called Earth Magazine. And they had a picture of a station, a research station in Antarctica. And, and, and in that research station, they, they were using solar thermal to heat their water and for heating. 
And I thought, yeah, actually, if it works in Antarctica, it may work here. <laughs> and so I kept blowing up the picture. <laughs> and, and I found out basically who manufactured it, and it traced back to this guy in Pennsylvania. And one day, um, I was back east, I showed up at this guy's uh, house, and, and, uh, and I said, I want to know what this is about. And he was real skeptic, you know, and who is this guy, is he a stalker? And, you know, he didn't really want to talk to me, but after about an hour or so, he sort of warmed up and said, yeah, and he sold me that little display kit that's over by the room, and I brought that back, and it was, this was January, I got back, and I put it out in February, and it was 20 below. I just set it out there, and I put a thermistor on it, tubes, and I was getting up to 300 degree temperatures. Wow. Yeah, this, this really works. And I priced them out and it was reasonable. So I had, I called him up and had to ship me a bunch. And it was he and Ha and he said, you know, he wanted me to side my system. And I said, he wanted to do this F chart. And I thought, this is getting way too complicated. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't have all the answers. And I said, how do you size it? And he said, four tubes per person. <laughs> and that's what I did. <laughs> and it worked. And, 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 and talking with people now, I think it's not the size of your solar collector, it's how much water you can store. Being able to store it for a long period of time, because you can generate a lot of heat, but being able to store it when you need it is our mm -hmm. critical thing. From about the middle of February through about May, you can actually generate much more solar energy, uh, either electric and thermal, than you, you can normally use. A lot of these collectors are made in, in, um, in Germany, and Sunda, the ones I have, is made in BG, it's a Solar Energy Institute. I'm trying to eliminate my electric and, and gas bills. The only problem is you can't turn off the sun when you want, I mean, <laughs> you, you cannot build a big, I mean, you can build smaller fires or turn off your water heater, but the sun is sort of a hard thing to turn off. And you still get the heat and you got to figure out what to do with it. If you're building a new house, run a, a hydronic loop around your foundation mm -hmm. and just dump it into your foundation and during the winter you'll regain that. Oh, yeah. You'll warm up your floors. Um, more. Our groundwater temperature comes in at around 34 to 35 degrees. The highest I've ever seen a tank, this tank is 160 degrees. What's the lowest? The lowest is, it stays about 60. If we never get net billing squared away, you can bank your kilowatts. Mm -hmm. And, th and that's what a lot of us are counting on. Like I can generate on a sunny day with my array, the other buildings, I can generate 15 kilowatts a day. I, and I have a one, one and a half kilowatt system. I'm gonna put a 10 kilowatt system. With a 10 kilowatt system, if I can bank those kilowatts, I'll have plenty of power for, for the two apartment buildings and three houses. Uh, the net billing is you basically bank your kilowatts. You put a kilowatt in, you get it back. Under state law, we have net billing, but the details haven't been worked out. I mean, the Utilities Commission has not had the interconnection, and we need that. But And like Chickaloon Village Corporation, they, they put electric back, but they, they've never gotten a penny for theirs. So. It's a donation. It's a donation. <laughs> Which all I'm saying, I don't have all the answers, but I think it, there's great potential here, and you're going to see others. You're going to see David Jones at the end of the day. Uh, he's got a much more perfected system than I did. I mean, I was pretty early on in the stage here, and I, I would do it a lot differently. I'd put much bigger tanks in, and I, I know a lot more, but uh, David, basically, uh, his system, yeah, I think you'd really be impressed with. And he's got a really big house, and... Uh, an airplane hangar that he's heating with his system, and it's it's not a it's not a small location, and it, it and it's basically met 50% of his needs too. And you're supposed to meet 50% of your needs for the tax credit too. Actually, this one's saving more, me more on heating than the domestic hot water. We we actually did the calculations. It's roughly a thousand dollars a year, but it turns out it's the heating because this basement. What we were having trouble with is cold floors. The heat would just leave and go up through this building. There was nothing stopping it. And the, the heating has been probably about 70% of the offset here rather than the domestic hot water. By the way, you can clean out these tanks. You can, you can, the heat, the coil comes right out of the bottom. There's bolts there, you can pull them out. And they fit perfectly in a five gallon bucket. And you can pour vinegar or you can go down to Lowe's and get muriatic acid and soak the calcium magnesium right off of them. But the, and the plumbers throw these away uh, 
every time you go to the dump you can find one or you can call a plumber and I called Hardy Heating once and asked him give me a couple of tanks just send them at the end of the call sack I pick them up within a week I had a dozen sitting out there I mean, <laughs> and I said I had to call him back and say cut it off I don't want to. they're paying to throw these away and this, this copper coil in there is probably worth about two hundred dollars just in copper and brass wow. I mean but the, they go to the dump in mass quantities. All the mechanical contractors are throwing a, a lots of these away, these tanks. And, and what happens in five to ten years, depending on your water, they just build up a calcium magnesium level around the coil. They're, they're not effective anymore. They don't get any heat exchange. So you have to go in there and clean them. And it, it's, too, it's not cost effective to hire a plumber to do it at 90 or or $120 an hour to do it. So you have to back out the six bolts, pull the thing out. It's a little hard to pull out because the calcium magnesium will be a big bulber in there. And, uh, but you can get it out and just soak it. And if you just want to soak it in vinegar, it'll take probably a week or two and it'll clean it right up. Yeah. And it'll look like a brand spanking new penny. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there is downside. Uh, plumbers and mechanical people know nothing about it. They don't care to know anything about it. It's just not something, I mean, uh, one or two take a sort of passing interest. But, but the question I was going to ask, if you ha wanted to sell this place to anybody, would you have to write up an operations manual? And well, I've got an parts kit I, I do have an operation manual. That you can okay. hand over to them? Because I, I don't know that this would be a very good selling point for somebody that didn't know anything about solar. But once you once you get the system up and operating, it, it's maintenance free. I, 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 the solar electric systems, you have to pay attention to, or I, I do mine. But this one, I, I come down here every few months and look at the gauges. Twenty years ago we were the same boat with that. I mean every contractor in the in the state was saying this energy conservation stuff would not work. It, this is all ho hocus pocus. You mm -hmm. could not seal up a house. People were going to die on these houses. We had building inspectors tell us we were going to kill people. Uh, <laughs> the bad indoor air quality. The bad indoor air quality. That None of those things ever happened because we, we learned to mechanically ventilate. There's a learning curve in everything. And a lot of the friends that I've run around with down the States and stuff, and, I, and I've gone all across the world from China through Europe and looked at systems, they're getting this net zero energy down. I mean, I looked at just dozens and dozens of places in Germany and Scandinavia and Iceland that are net zero. And they people are getting it down. <laughs> and, and we don't want to be... I think it's to our detriment if we don't get it down. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to be behind economically. My utility bills total right now, and I think they're, this is outrageous, but the, my, between my gas and electric, they're about $100 per building. And when I bought all these buildings, they were right around $1,000 a month. But I'm trying to... So I, that $900 that I save every month, I can throw to other things. we got other options, and uh, I, I would... I would implore you to explore them and, and like I say I don't have all the answers but you're going to see Pete, you're going to see David Jones, you're going to see other places in, in, and we, the Kenai had totally, Kenai had totally different solutions. I mean we're all coming up with different solutions and, and what this Alaska Center for Appropriate Technology, we're trying to figure all this out and start building manuals because there's no manuals to do this now. Mm -hmm. I mean we, we've got to develop all this stuff from scratch. You've got to develop ma training manuals you know, how-to manuals. This has operated four years. It's basically saved me $1,000 a year. And my system cost was $3,246 or something like that. And I got a third rebate and tax credit. Excellent. Especially in the spring, you can get in there. If you don't have that water run through there, you can quickly get up to 300 degrees. Actually, I've seen my system up closer to 400 degrees.